Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 30th of April, 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including out transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that there are continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and First Nations who may be present with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its de deliberations to the advancement of your glory, and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you, members. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, we have no apologies of leave of absence this evening. Uh, so I go to item six, which is the confirmation of minutes from the 9th of April. If I could have someone move the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Sins, and a second, a Councillor Hyde. Um, members, any comments, changes? If not, uh, can we vote, please? Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Deputations, item seven. Um, we have Mr Shane Sodi doing deputation tonight on the sponsorship of the Adelaide Parklands Art Prize. Mr Shodi, uh, Sodi, if you'd like to come forward. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening, Lord Mayor, Councillors. I'm making a deputation about an item that appears on number 12.1 on your agenda, a business plan and budget for the Parklands Authority. Um, one of the items on the um, Authority's budget is an amount of $15,000 for the Adelaide Parklands Art Prize. I apologise to you, Lord Mayor, and to Councillor Hyde, who have heard this before at the um, Authority's meeting a couple of weeks ago. The Parklands Art Prize started in 2014 and is held biennially. Our association, the Adelaide Parklands Preservation Association, is very grateful for the City of Adelaide's um, past sponsorship through the Authority's budget. We obviously would keenly appreciate your involvement and financial support again in 2020, as we did in 2014, 2016 and 2018. Conceptually, this project is a marriage made in heaven. Adelaide is the festival city noted for the arts and with the world-renowned festival. And of course, the other thing for which the city is famous is something the Lord Mayor mentioned just a moment ago, our world unique parklands. An art prize focusing attention on the parklands therefore capitalizes and promotes on both of this city's strengths. It helps to showcase and raise awareness through the works of hundreds of artists 
the irreplaceable jewels of parklands that garland this unique city. Our plans for the 2020 Art Prize include entries opening in August this year, closing in February next year, and then after judging, the exhibition would be scheduled for April and May at the Festival Centre, a little bit earlier than it was in 2018. Uh, in 2018, the Parklands Art Prize was successful not only in terms of fostering appreciation of the parklands, but also for rewarding the artists, many of whom sold their works with total value of or total sales of $32,000 during the finalists' exhibition at the Festival Centre in July and August last year. The past sponsorship by the city through APLA's budget allocation has been an excellent way of fulfilling one of the authority's statutory functions to promote public awareness of the importance of the Adelaide Parklands. And in 2018, the total prize money was $33,500, um, which comprised 20,000 first prize, a $2,000 young artists prize, 10 commended prizes of $1,000 each, and a people's choice prize of $1,000. Actually, that adds up to 33, not 335. Um, in 2020, we'd like to uh, increase the incentive for artists to enter by increasing the prize money for each of the 10 commended prizes from not the big one, but all of the smaller ones from 1,000 to 1,500 with a similar increase for the People's Choice Prize. And that would have the effect of increasing the total prize money from 33 to 38,500. The intent of those changes is to reflect the reality that there's usually a fine line between the first prize winner and its close competitors. And it better serves the awareness raising purpose of the Parklands Art Prize to acknowledge and reward multiple outstanding artistic visions of the Parklands that might be expressed in a variety of media. Uh, to help facilitate this proposed prize money increase with hope that the council could see fit to not only renew sponsorship in 2020, but to increase the amount from $10,000 previously to $15,000 in this iteration. That's not a majority of the funding. It represents 39% of the proposed larger prize pool. Obviously, we are uh, pursuing all other options for sponsorships to fund the remainder of the prize pool and the overall budget. For the first time, we've been able to arrange tax deductible gift recipient status using the Australian Cultural Fund as an intermediary. We propose that in 2020, in part recognition of the City of Adelaide's central role in sponsorship, the City would have the first option to purchase the winning entry from the artist. I note that in 2018, the Council purchased the winning artwork Spheres by Christopher Meadows, and the Lord Mayor has let me know that that is hanging in her office. Um, the City of Adelaide and the Parklands Authority would be acknowledged as major sponsors in all of our publicity, consistent with the practice in previous events. We'd also be delighted if you, Lord Mayor, uh, like your predecessor, could play a role in meeting the artists who are chosen as finalists and, of course, in awarding prizes at the opening night. And we would, of course, be very willing to consider any suggestions from the Council on how the art prize might be improved in 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sowey. Members, that takes us to number eight. There are no petitions. Uh, so we go to number nine, which the reports of committee and advice from APLA. Uh, we go to recommendation one, which is the pedestrian safety at traffic signals. Could I have a mover, please? Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Moran, a seconder. Councillor uh, Karen. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Councillor Karen. Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Some of the members, if I could go to the vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Uh, that takes us to uh, recommendation two, which is the. Could we do this by exception, or is that not allowed? Uh, I would rather go through each of them, if that's just so that we can. Um, rather than on block, if that's okay. So recommendation two is the Tain Montilla Riparian Restoration Project. If I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Donovan and a seconder. Councillor Knoll. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Knoll. No. Members? Councillor Moran? I wish to speak against it. 
Um, I think that the, uh, the scorched earth um, uh, recommendation is untenable. I don't think this council should be chopping down mature trees. There's a way to do it with still introducing the new river red trees with the existing trees there that um, particularly the beautiful, um, very historic colonial palms. Uh, I know we have agreed to move two, but the third one will be chopped down. That is the one that is in the forefront of the view from the uh, zoo bridge. Um, I really object to beautiful European and foreign trees being called woody weeds. I shudder to think how many times I have voted to remove woody weeds and not realise that these meant fully mature trees. I thought they meant scrappy little bits of woody weeds along a river. I think it's a deceptive title. I've looked it up, I haven't heard it referred to in many um, um, environmental or um, uh, <clears throat> the context of this. So I think it is a, it is a word aimed to uh, minimise the um, the type of plant that's being removed and I find that very offensive. I will not vote for this um, and uh, if only because of that word, the term woody weed, there's not such thing as a woody weed. Woody weed is a little woody thing this high. It is not a magnificent 50 year old palm tree and uh, I think that for us to um, do this to this beautiful riverbank uh, in the name of uh, biodiversity, which means the diversity of biological plants to actually introduce a monoculture is um, is offensive on all levels and I will not vote for this. Um, I'll just ask the CEO to comment because there was some news that came in a little bit earlier. Yep, three of me. I've been advised that it is possible to retain or relocate that key palm tree that was the matter of major discussion at the last committee. So I just needed to make you aware of that. But Michelle, you may want to just provide some clarifying comments if that's okay. Could I ask is that will not in the report, though, when that hasn't been communicated to us before the meeting? It was communicated earlier today uh, through e-news, but I'll ask Michelle just to clarify for you. Um, sorry, through the Lord Mayor. Um, uh, following um, the, the previous uh, meeting of committee, um, at that second part of point one, accepting tree nine, um, we, I sent an e-news um, out, um, I think it was yesterday actually, that um, indicated that we had an arborist, arborist sorry, look at the tree um, and they believed that um, it would be um, able to be successfully translocated. Um, and then we've actually had the contractor out looking at it as well to, to ensure that we can actually get it out physically. Um, and the advice that I've received um, is that that would be possible. Um, we're working with the um, asset people to look at um, an appropriate location within the parklands for planting of both that and tree eight. Were there two other trees? Were there tree eight and nine? Yeah, yeah, there were two others. One was the one growing out the side of, into the river. No, that was, they were the three. Okay, well, I take back everything that I've just said. <laughs> and um, I suggest that you don't communicate through e-news, um, that a direct email to councillors is much more effective. I find e-news is quite a perfect, perfect thing, but the councillors don't tend to read it. I never read it. So I'd rather have a direct. We have lots of emails. It's much handier if we do that. So I apologise if I haven't been e-news. <laughs> Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I don't think Councillor Moran should take back anything <laughs> that she just said, um, because I was actually, uh, you know, I was sitting there and I was quite inspired by what she said and, and moved to stand up and say something. Um, look, uh, we don't want to beat up on an administration at all, uh, but I think that Councillor Moran, I think Councillor Moran is 100% spot on when she talks about the use of the, the language, the term woody we. Uh, I think I think new, new members ought to be really have their antennas up for anything that smacks of um, well euphemism, to put it politely, Lord Mayor, euphemism. Uh, so I think that you know these are trees, and I think that we ought to be able to. Uh, we're all adults. If there are trees that are going to be removed, it ought to say tree removal. Um, that's fine. Trees sometimes need to go. 
that, that that's fine. We can accept that. The term woody weed, it just, it's just a bit dodgy, I'm sorry. But anyway, it, it, that can be the subject of a future motion. That's something that I'm thinking about now that it comes up. Um, I do agree that this particular tree, obviously I raised it at committee, I thought this tree, it, it would be a mistake to remove it now. Um, I think that uh, what we've got is, a, it's a little bit odd because we've got a piecemeal, we've got a piecemeal program down there. We are introducing a river red gum environment. There's only a bit here and a bit here. We're keeping the two palm trees that are sticking out, but we're going to remove this one. And I think that's partly related to its proximity and its visibility to Frome Road. Um, so, so look, look, I echo what uh, Councillor Moran says uh, wholeheartedly, and I think that I think it's it is really worth a new council uh, just keeping in mind we're in charge. If there's language that seeks to, to put stuff through, you know, to slip it through uh, kind of easily. Let's take note of it and let's let's call it out. Members, no, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Donovan to sum up. <laughs> well, I think it would be very rude of us to say to council administration that the term woody weed is dodgy and trying to slip something through when that is a technical term. And if we don't understand those technical terms, we can certainly ask for an explanation. And in committee meeting, thank you very much to council administration for giving us in-depth uh, technical information to describe all of those terms. Similarly, I think it would be very unfair, given this is a project that has been uh, in process for, I believe, around 10 years. Is that right? The riparian restoration project. So it would be undermining the huge effort that has gone to this point and as was explained to us in the committee meeting, the reason why this is happening in the way that it is, is that it is a phased approach. And the next phase is that these trees are relocated. So um, thank you very much for to council for all of the work that has been done on this biodiversity plan and on moving forward with the next phase and ensuring that we have all of the information to understand the technical terminology and that you're always available to ask questions when we are uncertain. So thank you very much for all of the work to date. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, members, if I can go to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, now, members, before I go to recommendation three, um, I did actually speak to the CEO a bit earlier because I was a little bit concerned after the discussion that we had in committee that the recommendation or the motion that's coming through tonight doesn't reflect the discussion that we had in committee. So there were several things. One is that we would look at a staged approach um, that would be considered and that would come back to us. And there's also uh, several items that had fairly robust feedback from members, including the built structure uh, in the middle and the use of, or the construction of the um, square in terms of event space versus being a community space. If we approve the master plan, my concern is that is the plan that everybody's going to work to. I do understand that things will come back to us for approval as they get done, but um, I, I might just ask the CEO to talk to that because I, I just want to raise those concerns ahead of that uh, recommendation. Yep, through you, Lord Mayor, following the committee meeting, uh, council staff have been working to incorporate the, the suggestions and I guess requirements from council. But certainly, I think it's appropriate for us to refer them back to you so you're really clear on what it is you're voting on. So perhaps that's, that's a good way forward is to actually revisit so you're totally totally comfortable with what is contained within the master plan. <laughs> Sorry, can I just clarify? Does that mean we're then not voting on this? Um, well, I'll leave it to the floor, but um, I'm... I'm would ask the floor to think about the recommendation that we're voting on. Well, well could I propose that we defer this then until the administration reports yes. back on the, the issues that councillors requested action on? I'm you can. That. Members? In favour of deferral? Oh, sorry, I just need a seconder. Just. Um, that's, <laughs> I'll go to Councillor Martin, seconder. And so. Um, we don't need to speak to that, but if you're happy to vote on that now, those in favour of deferral, thank you. We'll bring that back with something that um, just reflects further the conversation that we had, uh, both there and at Plum. 
Um, that takes us to recommendation number four, which is the citywide crash and black spot review. If I could have a mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kouras. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Kouras, no, members? No, if not, Councillor Moran, to sum up? Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that's carried. That takes us to recommendation number five, which is the EOI results at Carriageway Park to thank uh, um, Park 17. If I could have a mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Canole, and a seconder. Councillor Kerr, Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? Councillor Kerr, members? No, if not, Councillor Canole to sum up. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that's carried. Um, takes us to recommendation number six, which is the City Connector Bus. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder, Councillor Ho. Councillor Sims, would you like to speak to that? No, Councillor Ho? No, members? No, if not, Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that's carried. Uh, recommendation number seven was for the Adelaide Cabaret Festival's famous Spiegel tent. If I could have a mover, please. Uh, Councillor Knoll and a seconder. Councillor Abraham Sadeg. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Abraham Sadeg. No, members? Councillor Martin. Just briefly, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I've been contacted by a resident of uh, North Adelaide um, who uh, has asked that I register um, their protest. They were assured during the festival that there would be no noise. They claim there was noise and they are concerned that the proposed operating hours here, which is until 1am Thursday and 2am on Friday for five weeks, are uh, here for us to approve because they are outside of the Adelaide Parklands Event Management Plan, which went out to public consultation and uh, to which they made a submission asking for uh, an earlier closing. Now, uh, this proposal means that although it's gone out to community consultation, although we've agreed as a council that midnight is the hour at which all uh, events will stop there, particularly noise and music, um, yes, it is uh, midnight on weekdays, we are now saying to all of the participants in the consultation, um, tough luck, uh, it's now 1 a.m. on Thursdays and 2 a.m. on Fridays, and uh, we have to put up with it to uh, July 1st, May 24th to July 1st. Um, so I will be voting against this. Um, it is uh, the view of my resident that this is a, uh, a particular nuisance that uh, they would prefer not to tolerate. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members? Um, if I could have a question. Yes. Um, just uh, to the administration, uh, uh, can, is there a bit of a summary on, uh, you know, on part of that uh, community consultation on, on the comments from uh, you know, the residents, etc.? Vanessa, thanks. Um, through the Lord Mayor, yes, there was, and that would have been attached to the committee report. I don't have that on hand with me right now. so. That's difficult to answer without notice, but we would have attached the community consultation to that report. So, to that, that's, there was only just a, 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 no, a limited number of people that have obviously expressed uh, concern. I don't. I don't want to give you a number because I'd be saying off the top of my head. I can find it while we're sitting here, but there would there was limited um, feedback, and and from memory, the large majority of it was in favour. Thank you, members. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Knoll to sum up. I mean, um, we, we did uh, discuss uh, reasonably at. Uh, um, at the committee meeting, etc., and uh, I mean, uh, uh, we are, uh, it is it's a reasonable proposal, and I mean, uh, I, I would, uh, uh, I suppose, go with the administration and, and uh, um, that of the, the work that they did in, in trying to get the uh, you know community's opinion, and uh, you know, if it's uh, and again, I suppose it's, it's uh, with a limited number of people who have expressed a concern, and uh, if they've and I expect that we've done the right work with it, that we don't have any sort of major issue that we don't uh, 
that we don't we think we cannot uh, manage. So I suspect it's just up to the administration uh, that they keep an eye on this if there is anything that is under toward and um, and if that being the case that we can uh, uh, you know take uh, actions further. So which, with that I propose a motion. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <coughs> Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerra, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. That takes us to recommendation eight, which is the 2018-2019 uh, Q3 finance report. If I could have a mover, please. Thanks to Councillor Martin and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? No, not Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, if not, Councillor Martin, to someone. Thank you, members, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. And we have our recommendation nine, which is the owner occupier grant that we note the report. A mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Seconder, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No. Councillor Sims, members? No. Councillor Moran, to someone? No. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. And recommendation 10, which is the 2019 2020 draft integrated business plan. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Martin and um, a seconder, Councillor Kuros. I wish to move an alternative motion, Lord Mayor. <laughs> now, Councillor Martin, um, I had a look at this a bit earlier and I'm not going to accept this um, late uh, amendment um, or variation to the motion. Um, just under our guiding principles. Um, it does have a budgetary impact. Um, it doesn't give us time to have um, an administration comment or discussion by the council and the budget's going out for consultation. Um, I would ask if you could bring this back as a motion on notice prior to the final budget deliberation and then we can actually um, have time to uh, discuss and also get the administration comment. Um, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, with respect, um, it doesn't have a budget implication, it has none whatever. Um, it simply asks, it notes that there is a $750,000 capital uh, project for a new entrance to the Adelaide High School in Park 24, and it requests the administration to write to the Adelaide High School. Um, so, um, Councillor, given that's the ruling, and I did actually go through this earlier, um, so I will ask you to bring this in as a motion on notice that we can have an administration comment with it. Um, there were some uh, discussions that I had with administration earlier, um, so I would ask that you bring it back as a motion on notice. Well, uh, that, that, that's the ruling, Councillor, so I'll ask you to bring it back in as a motion on notice. Okay, Lord Mayor. Thank you. So I have to go back to the, sorry, uh, members, I have to go back to uh, a mover and a seconder. Are you a move? Thank you, Count, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a question of clarification. And um, if this is passed, what does that mean for uh, Councillor Martin's motion? Should he put it forward? at a future meeting. Are they, are they inconsistent in any way? They are inconsistent. The budget will go out for consultation for a, a three or four week period. Um, the, I think we've got two more council meetings before we pass the budget. Um, so I would ask that that comes in on a motion with administration comment. I think some of the writing within the integrated business plan isn't clear in terms of what that is. I just want to make sure that all members have the same information. Turn it off, members. No, if not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Just briefly, uh, Lord Mayor, I think this has been a, an excellent process um, through the budget um, and really uh, excited about the opportunity to engage with the community. 
Um, just a, a quick question. Do we know, I had a quick look online. Uh, when will uh, your say be activated uh, for people to provide feedback? I can tell you that it goes out on May the 8th. So everything starts on May the 8th. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to it. Uh, thank you. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, that takes us to item 9.2, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Um, and I have <laughs> four. Uh, advice number one is the Public Art Action Plan 2019-2020. Uh, if I could have someone move that we accept that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Can oh. we ask questions? Uh, yes, you may. Okay. Um, who, are the, uh, who are supposed to be the members on this committee that's referenced on page 15 at 4.3 to explore, to explore World Heritage nomination? And is there to be a councillor representation on that? I would ask uh, the executive officer, Martin, would you be able to come forward to speak to them? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, the uh, committee was established in October last year, but the membership matter was deferred to this year, uh, waiting on the new composition of the Apple board. So uh, membership hasn't been determined at this stage. Uh, uh, a supplementary question. So is it up to the Apple board to determine who will be on that committee, or is it up to council to determine who will be on that committee, which determines World Heritage nomination and the conditions that attach to the city. That would be up to Apple to determine. Thank you. Uh, so I am still looking for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I did just want to uh, express my uh, enthusiasm for the recommendations around looking at World Heritage Listing for the parklands. Um, members uh, will recall that um, that was a, am I speaking to the wrong? Sorry. Yes, I'm a little bit confused. Apologies, I'm, I'm uh, Lord I'm very Mayor. sorry. I support this in any case. I'll save my comments for the next time. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I'm always ahead of time, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to say? Sorry, members, would anybody else like to speak to the Public Art Action Plan? If not, uh, Councillor seems to sum up. Sum up. <laughs> members, those in favour, those against, thank you. That is endorsed. No, uh, advice number two, which is for uh, Rymel Park, uh, Merlewira Perker the draft master plan to go out to consultation, but, but this is the advice that APLA supports it. Those, if I could have a mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Kerra, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kouras. Councillor Kerra, did you wish to speak to it? I do, Lord Mayor. In fact, I, I stuck my hand up because I wanted to speak to it rather than move it. Um, but I just juncture, I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd flag that uh, I think this, right, this, this master plan is something we all should be really mindful of. It's a uh, fairly substantial change. Uh, I think, you know, uh, Rymond Park epitomises a parkland, a uh, section of the parklands that is every bit as important as heritage. Um, and, uh, and, and and your concerns, Lord Mayor, if I may, about uh, event space and the function of the creep of event spaces is something that we, we, we see in this master plan. So I, I just want to flag at this juncture that we, we ought to be mindful of this going forward. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak, members? If not, Councillor Kerr to sum up. Councillor, oh sorry, Councillor Kerr to sum up. Uh, Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, thank you, carried. Advice number three is the expression of interest results uh, for Carriageway Park to Thunga. Um, if I could have a member move, please, to accept the advice. Thank you, Councillor Canole, and a seconder. Councillor Kouros, Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? Councillor Kouros, members, Councillor Canole to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, thank you, that is carried. Advice number four is the Tame Montilla uh, <laughs> Riparian Restoration Project. 
I practiced that all afternoon. If I could have a member part of move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Seconded. Councillor Kouros. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Councillor Kouros, members. Councillor Donovan, sum up. Thank you those, uh, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That is carried. Oh, break for a moment. So, item 10 is my report for the 30th of April. So, I hope everybody had an enjoyable Easter, uh, both Easters. Um, and thank you to our Greek Easter Bunny who delivered some um, Greek Easter frizzies for us all this week. Um, I recently spoke at the Destination South Australia event at the Adelaide Town Hall, which was uh, hosted by the Adelaide Convention Bureau, uh, where I had the opportunity to spruik our city's key features to the key decision makers to hopefully entice them to bring their events to Adelaide. Uh, in particular, I was uh, just about to do the Lord Mayor's Golf Day, so I spoke uh, at length about how beautiful our golf course is and uh, right on the outskirts of the city, which was really interesting because I had a couple of members come up to me immediately after not realising it was a public golf course and they're now playing at that golf course, so any opportunity. Um, in recent weeks I've also uh, spoken uh, to the Commonwealth Club and at a CEDA luncheon, um, one uh, in terms of the City of Adelaide and one in terms of infrastructure. Um, I hosted the Lord Mayor's Business Roundtable yesterday, as well as uh, a few weeks ago, a specific roundtable meeting with Hindley Street stakeholders to discuss discuss uh, safety, shared objectives and future investment. And so there's a, a lot more work coming uh, to members <coughs> around Hindley Street. And that was uh, with stakeholders such as SAPOL and the Licensing Commission and the AHA, so taught and residential and um, uh, precinct groups. Um, Adelaide has a reputation as a city of education and welcoming people from around the world and to that end we had a welcoming event for the Chinese international students at the Adelaide Town Hall organised by Councillor Ho. Um, I also met with this year's Study Adelaide Malaysian Student Ambassadors and we held a citizenship ceremony in these chambers uh, four weeks ago where we welcomed 60 new Australians from 12 countries um, and that's I think the second one that we've done this year it's a beautiful event and I do encourage members to try and get to a, to a citizenship ceremony over the year. Um, there have been many significant military events in the city in recent weeks um, I attended the Royal Australian Air Force event at the Torrance Parade Ground, which celebrated 98 years since their foundation. Um, the, uh, I also uh, met the commanding officer and crew of the HMS Adelaide, uh, who exercised their freedom of entry to the city during the recent visit. Um, and I attended the ceremonial sunset reception aboard the ship at Outer Harbour, which was um, amazing, beautiful. Um, it was an absolute privilege to represent the City of Adelaide at this year's Anzac Day commemorations. Um, it was a full day. It started with the dawn service at the South Australian National War Memorial, then to the Australian Light Horse Service, which I had never been to before. And it was absolutely beautiful listening to the stories about the war horses and their role in, in the war. Um, and the speaker was extraordinary. He uh, spoke for 15 minutes without notes, just told the story of the horses. It was brilliant. Um, the viewing of the Anzac Day March um, and the service of remembrance at the Cross at Sacrifice um, and the, finally at the Governor's reception at Government House. We had a civic reception to celebrate the Adelaide Football Club women's team winning the 2019 um, AFLW Premiership, the second in just three years of the league. Um, a reception was also held to welcome the Hellenic uh, Presidential Guard to Adelaide during the recent visit, um, which they also uh, marched uh, on Anzac Day. Uh, reception, no, sorry, May is History Month, um, so we've just started and I attended the launch of the History Festival uh, along with Councillor Sims and Councillor Knoll, um, as well as this weekend was the North Adelaide Precinct Association's Rare and Classic Car Show and I chose the Morgan as the Lord Mayor's Prize. It was um, some beautiful cars there. Um, tomorrow uh, I will be joining our community's uh, women 
by attending the domestic violence vigil in Elder Park, which is organised by the Council for Women's Domestic Violence Services. And I encourage um, members to join me. It's at 5.30 um, in Elder Park. Um, I would also like to formally acknowledge the atrocious Easter Sunday terrorist attacks in Sri Lanka. In remembrance, a multi-faith community event was held at the Sri Lankan Cultural Hub in Crafers on Saturday, and a community mass was held at St. Francis Xavier's Cathedral on Sunday evening. Um, I have invited members of the Christian and Sri Lankan community, the leaders, to the Town Hall for a small gathering this Friday, and I hope members can join me for that. Um, finally, members, Council's participation and inclusion team was recognised at the recent Governor's Multicultural Awards being awarded the Public Sector Award for 2018. The judge's citation noted Council's genuine leadership in encouraging cultural diversity and multicultural participation. It also noted the many initiatives that support people from diverse communities, as well as our status as a refugee welcome zone since 2014 and becoming the first Australian capital city to join the Welcoming Cities initiative in 2017. So congratulations to the team and Vanessa Godden, the Acting Director of Community, will now present the award. Uh, members, if I could have someone accept the report. Someone over here accept the report. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and second to Councillor Knoll. Uh, those in favour? Thank you. That takes us to item number 11, which is the reports from Council members. If I could have a member move. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And a second to Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Sims, any? No? Councillor Abraham today. No, members? If not, back to the move to sum up. Thank you. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to item number 12. 12.1 uh, is the APLA Business Plan and Budget 2019-2020. If I could have a move. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Second to Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? No, I don't. Councillor Sims. My moment has come, Lord Mayor, having, <laughs> having been uh, uh, mistaken um, earlier. I did just want to put on uh, record how um, excited I am to see uh, this request for um, an investigation looking at um, Adelaide parklands being um, World Heritage listed. Um, members might uh, recall that was a, a big issue in the recent uh, election campaign. Um, and uh, I think at a time when there's a huge amount of interest in our parklands, this would be a real win for our community. We know that the parklands are already uh, subject to a national heritage listing, which is fantastic. But having world heritage listing would really elevate the parklands, I think um, would be a boon for tourism and um, really would also reflect um, the role that they play as a real icon for our city and indeed something that's important to all South Australians and Australians. So I think this is a really exciting step. Thank you, Councillor. Members? No, if not, go back to the move to summer. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. 12.2 is progress of motions by elected members. If I could have a mover, please, members. Thank you, Councillor Martin. A seconder. Councillor Kerra. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? No, ma'am. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. No, members? Councillor Martin? No, Thank you. To the vote, those in favour? Thank you. That's against, that's carried. That takes us to item 13, which we have questions on notice. Councillor Martin, 13.1. Um, I'm happy to take the questions, really. Yeah. Would you like the response read out? Um, or are you happy with the response? Well, perhaps if you would, uh, no one would go in. I think everybody's gone. Yep. Are you happy with that? Am I happy with what? That everybody has the response, or did you wish it to be? Oh, written? everybody has a response, gallery included? No, the gallery don't. 
Um, look, it might be awful. Look, maybe I notice there are a couple of people shaking their heads. Certainly. Uh, thank you. So the existing approved car parking areas of um, Tatanya Wama, which is Park 26 Community Land Management Plan, 2009 identifies oval number two, Adelaide oval number two, as an approved area for car parking. Section 4.8 CLMP car parking clause seven states, parking should occur in the following order of priority on oval number two, 200 capacity, on the grassed area to the north of the oval, 1200 capacity, in order to protect its visual qualities, pinky flat, 500 capacity, parking on pinky flat is to cease after three years from 2019, uh, 2009, my apologies. The Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority is not required to seek council consent to use oval number two for car parking as it is a permitted use under the CLMP. The administration has not been approached by the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority in relation to parking on oval number two on future occasions as it is permitted under the CLMP. Thank you. That takes us to 13.2. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, as the answer is no, I'm, I'm happy for the, uh, the question and um, the answer to be taken as written. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions without notice, members? Councillor Martin. Okay, supplementary to the question with regard to car parking, Lord Mayor. The CLMP uh, of 2009, which was quoted in the administration's response to car parking, was formulated before the Adelaide Oval Act and before the creation of the SMA. Has it been adjusted so that it reflects the new relationship between the City of Adelaide and the Stadium Management Authority, or is the information that's being presented here the information that related to when the City of Adelaide or the old Adelaide City Council had the sole right of approval for parking at the Adelaide Oval. Thank you. Through Lord Mayor, I understand it has not been adjusted. Is that correct, Martin? Yep. That's the answer. A uh, uh, supplementary question. So we're actually relying on regulations that were formulated before the Stadium Management Authority was created and before their authority over the area was established. Through Lord Mayor, I'll ask Martin to, to respond in detail. Thanks. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, that uh, community land management plan is currently under review, so that will be brought to council in the near future. I take that to, to mean a yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions without notice? Just Sorry, a very quick one, Martin. Lord Mayor. Um, the Capital City Committee met yesterday, and look, I, I am uh, interested to know, as are the organisers of the bid, um, was the subject of the e-car race discussed and what was the nature of the enthusiasm or otherwise <coughs> of uh, the state government for the event? Uh, my understanding is that the Capital City Committee meeting is cabinet in confidence. So that report will come through later in confidence. Even for good news, Lord Mayor. For all news, Councillor Martin. Thank you. And I'm sure you knew that anyway, because you're <laughs> grinning like a Cheshire cat. So let us go to number 15, motions on notice. Councillor Sims, 15.1. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move that Council supports the inclusion of social benefit, including providing employment and other opportunities for people living with disability and or social disadvantage as criteria within its procurement policies and guidelines and request that administration report back to Council on progress in this area by October 2019. And I seek a seconder. Councillor Moran. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, this motion is a fairly straightforward one. Council has a procurement policy in place which governs our procurement operations. And I'm simply proposing that we commit to including social benefit as criteria within this policy. This means that we could give favourable consideration to businesses that provide a benefit to the broader community. And uh, by social benefit, this is broad and I've deliberately left it quite open, but this includes providing employment and other opportunities to people living with disability and or social disadvantage. 
This is really, really important because we know that discrimination against South Australians with disabilities remains a big issue within the employment market here in our state. And we also know that there are huge economic benefits in terms of providing increased opportunities for people with disability within our workforce. A National Disability Service report by Deloitte recently found that increasing workplace participation for people with disabilities from 54% to 64% would boost our state's GDP by $1.4 billion a year. So a significant boost to our economy and one that we should definitely support. As also noted by Prue Gorman, who was quoted in the advertiser on the topic on the 20th of April and is the executive officer of a not-for-profit that employs people living with disability, people living with disabilities have the skills, the knowledge, the gifts and the talents and have the capacity to make enormous contributions to our community through paid employment. And I couldn't agree more with that statement, Lord Mayor. There are social enterprises who provide opportunities for uh, people who experience a series of different kinds of social disadvantage. There are organisations that employ people who are long term unemployed, for instance, who I think would also get a benefit um, out of this. Council has a significant operating budget. Indeed, it's about $200 million a year. And so who we do business with has a big impact. It makes sense that we should support businesses that contribute positively to our community and support social enterprises that make a positive contribution to our community. Council has a lot of really worthy goals around making Adelaide a more inclusive city. And this is a way that we can put our money where our mouth is. I encourage all councillors to get behind this. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Um, yes, just briefly. Um, I, I thoroughly endorse um, what Councillor uh, what Councillor Sims has stated. This is a I, we used to do this many years ago. Um, have that as a criteria, but it seems to have fallen off in the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, so I think it's a sensible and very worthy um, re-edition. Members. I might just make a comment myself. So, um, as you can see, uh, administration is looking at a review of the policies and the guidelines and um, social, environment and economic sustainability are part of our secondary criteria. I think that will give us um, a really good opportunity to look how we leverage our procurement um, over uh, many of the criteria, including the use of local goods and services, which is again a secondary criteria. Um, and I know there's a, a motion on notice coming through in a short while around that procurement. Um, but obviously, the, the more that we can actually leverage our procurement for the outcomes for the city, the better. Um, so I uh, support this and uh, and also hope uh, look forward to seeing that procurement work coming through to the chamber. Uh, Councillor Sims, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, very briefly, it, it's terrific that Council is doing work in this um, regard. I appreciate um, your support um, and uh, look forward to looking at issues around local procurement and also around sustainability as well. Um, but I think this is a really important principle for Council to get behind and um, I think would also set a, a template for other Councils to follow in terms of Council taking a position and providing uh, opportunities and supporting organisations that provide opportunities for people living with disability or people uh, experiencing social disadvantage. I think it would be a, a really great outcome for the Council. Thank you. Members, uh, if we can vote please. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to 15.2, Councillor Sims. Back again, Lord Mayor. Um, I move that uh, Council request that administration investigate options for prohibiting election campaign signage, uh, for example, core flutes, from streets in the city of North Adelaide for future election campaigns, and I seek a seconder. Councillor Martin, thank you. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I suspect my good luck may be about to, uh, <laughs> may be about to end. Um, but uh, this is a very important um, motion uh, for this council. It is straightforward, but it aims to end the uh, visual pollution that we see on our city streets during elections, and it aims to end the waste that is caused by these. 
At a time when we are increasingly concerned about the use of plastics in our city, it seems wrong that we see uh, plastic signage like this on um, our city streets. It's also a view that is shared overwhelmingly uh, by uh, my constituents, and I have had lots of positive feedback on this since I uh, put this idea forward um, last week. Now, I know, Lord Mayor, um, some people may say, um, oh, you know, Robert Sims, you've had four flutes before yourself. Uh, this is true, Lord Mayor. Guilty as charged, I have used core flutes before. But uh, if you're going to wait until you're perfect before you go out and try and change the world for the better, you're going to be waiting for a very long time. And uh, I am flawed. I, I'm not perfect. I have used core flutes. But um, I believe that um, really there is an opportunity here to change the rules. Um, and to ensure that these aren't a part of future elections. Because what we have at the moment is these signs being uh, end up being used um, as some kind of bidding war in election campaigns. There's an arms race. Candidates that have got more money and more resources can fill our city streets with signs. And um, the underdog candidates, those that are just starting out um, and don't have the, uh, the financial capacity and the resources uh, are left behind. Um, and we have a situation where you're forced to keep up with the Joneses. And so levelling the playing field for all, I think would be really beneficial. Core flutes are costly. They're about $7 a go, um, but they're also bad for the environment. And um, they sit around and uh, you know they're very difficult to, uh, to recycle. Um, so I note administration's comments here um, and the suggestion that there be a, a letter sent through to the minister asking for action. I think that would be worthwhile. It would also be really good to look at opportunities uh, to, and explore those of the government to advocate for maybe limiting the number of signs that could be used and also opportunities for council, um, should the government not support um, outlawing this form of pollution, to um, actually uh, put in place some sort of scheme where we could assist with recycling at a local level um, of uh, candidate core flutes, and that might be something that I um, look at uh, in the future. But um, you know, this is a, a good opportunity for us. It's topical at the moment, and I note that it's also had uh, support from all sides of politics. Indeed, um, the outgoing member for Adelaide, um, Kate Ellis, uh, said that she supports getting rid of these, uh, as did the outgoing member for Sturt, Christopher Pine, and it has the support of a former Green Senator as well. What more could you want? Councillor Martin. So, and just for the record, um, the core flutes uh, that were used during the election are recy were recycled, and there's one place in South Australia in Newton that takes them, and the rest are in Victoria. Um, members, Councillor Kerr. Well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, um, I, I am compelled to speak here. Banning, banning core flutes. Uh, look, the the problem, uh, Lord Mayor, um, and I think it's worth members reflecting on the fact uh, that the word problem has the word rob in it. <laughs> <laughs> The word problem. The word problem has the word rob in it, and and Lord, 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 the problem. The problem with this. The problem with this. Uh, with this motion is that uh, is that core flutes. Core, flute, core flutes are a celebration. They are a celebration of democracy, and uh, there are places. There are places in which core flutes. There are places in which core flutes are banned, uh, and that is in communist dictatorships. Oh. Communist dictatorship. So that is the problem, Lord Mayor. That is the problem with the motion, but the problem with the motion, uh, <laughs> members, the problem, because Lord Mayor, it's a it's a double feature. It's you know, uh, motions from that corner. Not always, not always, but often, too often. You, there's a problem and there's a problem, and 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 the problem is, I think. Actually, you know what? I'm certain. I'm certain, Lord Mayor, that our constituents have about 1,000 issues that are more important and more concerned to them right now than this sort of nonsense. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Members, Councillor Moran. Right, look, uh, while I found that quite amusing, um, as I did the others, I, I am a little tired of the play the man, not the ball, even in jest. This is, a, this is a motion that has come from the public. Um, I do actually agree with Councillor Carer that it is part of our democracy, and uh, but they also agree with um, 
Councillor Sims that this is something that is very unpopular with the, um, the average person and quite unpopular with politicians. So with all due respect, I think we let's let's stick to looking at the um, at the issue rather than looking at the motives or um, belittling or the person moving it. I'm a little tired of it, even if it is funny. Councillor <laughs> 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 Canal. Uh, sadly, I'm not that funny. Um, <laughs> uh, but fundamentally, I look at this, I mean, uh, we can make the counter argument to that every time. And the simple fact is that if we're looking at uh, core flutes, and we're not, uh, yes, yeah, some people plaster the city with those, that's all well and good. Uh, but often it is it is a reasonably low cost way for someone to uh, be able to get their, their, at least an image of themselves out amongst the public. because. If we want to, if we're talking about this as in, in the sense of trying to make uh, standing for local council open to the community, then we need to think about what are low cost ways that we're enabling people who have min, uh, limited means to be able to do that. And until we find other means by which we can, and we can talk about uh, doing uh, through social media, but even on a really good day, a thousand is great. And we seem to have about what twenty six or twenty eight thousand people that are supposed to be voting. Um, you know, I mean, and you're not really being able to connect in any simple way. I mean. And if we're talking about the other forms of whether you're doing with letterboxing and things like that, I mean, 6,000 of our electors are certainly not accessible to anything other than with a stamp. So there's lots of things we got to think about and, and keeping some simple, low-tech ways for people to be able to engage with the community. And this is a small one until you can find another, another uh, method. Uh, that combined with your shoe leather and, and uh, going house to house. But again, depending on the size of the constituency, uh, you know, you are, and you know, as an area councillor, it's certainly a little bit further to North Adelaide down to South Terrace uh, than it is for doing the other other wards. But the point is, is that uh, we can look at this, but in a holistic way and saying, okay, how can we enable people with limited means to take part? How, what are the forms that, you know, that we can see, okay, these are the ways that they can do that and, and uh, certainly uh, promote themselves and, and what they stand for. And, and obviously get their, their, uh, their, their ideas and that issues out into the public. And I think if we're doing that, then I consider that to be a positive uh, move. But just simply looking at one aspect uh, and in a minute, then that's still one that you can put up yourself uh, without having a large, large numbers of assistance and things like that, which some people have the good fortune of having. So I think I would vote against it at this stage, but unless we can come up with something that is going to be a little bit more assist, you know, assist people who actually generally want to run and can't afford a great budget. Maybe we could do poster pillars like they do for the fringe posters. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just wanted to clarify, uh, because I don't want this to be sort of an indication if this gets voted up that other things might go. Um, how would administration uh, interpret when we're talking about streets, for example? So it might be one thing to ban uh, putting core flutes on public infrastructure, but uh, when candidates go out and have street corner meetings or when they're door knocking, they might leave an A-frame on the side of the road, for example. So that uh, reading this administration comment would still be counted as a mobile sign um, will be a lot less intrusive as far as the landscape goes. Um, if we pass this motion, would administration seek to also uh, write to the to the state government uh, asking that we get rid of those as well? Is that how we, or would we would we then be looking to regulate those signs as well? I don't want, um, and I'll speak to the motion in a moment, but I just want clarity on okay, that. So what we're you giving a green light for. Um, it's very difficult to answer at this time because we haven't really considered that aspect. It's mm. a new new thing. That's um, what I'm so I don't know if you have any thoughts on this one. No? Yeah. Yeah. So we might have to just take that on notice at this time. Okay. Um, I guess on balance, I'll speak to the motion now. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I would say on balance a few things. Um, one, if you're paying seven dollars for your call flutes, you're paying too much. Um, <laughs> Councillor Sims. Um, uh, two. Uh, Councillor Noel is actually very right. They they are a low cost way for new candidates to get their to get their um, name ID up actually, and uh, so it really it's it advantages new candidates more than incumbents. Um, so it actually they do advantage the little guy. Having said that, um, Councillor Kira spoke about places where core flutes are banned. Actually, core flutes are banned everywhere in the country. It is a peculiarly South Australian phenomenon, um, <laughs> which is, which is which is nice. Um, uh, for those reasons that I outlined, but I think on balance, people are sick of them. 
um, I can say that people are certainly sick of putting them up. Um, uh, and so I'm uh, happy to support this motion, but I would flag for administrations that I would be uh, severely very disappointed if um, if it was expanded out from from just uh, 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 signs on our public infrastructure, on our light posts and that, and that sort of thing. Um, and we just thought uh, we could just get rid of them you know, across across during the entire election campaign on, on sides of roads and that, because that actually would be um, bad for democracy. Members, Councillor Abraham, sit down. Uh, just a quick question, Lord Mayor. The um, local government reform submission that the City of Adelaide put together, did that submission contain anything around um, uh, core floats? Not to my knowledge, CEO. I don't no, through Lord Mayor, no, there was no reference to those at all. Councillor Donovan. Um, I think uh, I'm a bit conflicted on this one as well because I did use core floats, but I think regardless of what happens with this motion, uh, Councillor Stevens' comment that he may bring something more to the chamber um, makes good sense in terms of what we can do. There are now uh, core floats available that are compostable. There are, as you mentioned, Lord Mayor, you know, we, there is a recycling option available. So I think what we can do is when the option arises, if, if nothing happens in regard to um, actually banning core floats, then we could offer a better facilitation of recycling. We could provide communication around the, the uh, compostable corporates that are now available or compostable signage that's now available um, that's you know uh, basically waterproof cardboard um, so we can have a role in that way if this does not go anywhere so I'd be fully supportive of anything that comes into the chamber in that way that, that we can directly action. Thank you councillor. Members? Councillor Martin? Look, just briefly Lord Mayor, uh, I too am uh, conflict that I used uh, core flutes and uh, throughout North Adelaide and uh, I consulted uh, my mother uh, about this matter earlier today and uh, she was somewhat saddened to learn that there may be a ban on core flutes in the future. Um, uh, I must say however, uh, my mother's feelings aside, um, recycling is not the issue. The issue is that the city is plastered with faces, in many cases faces only a mother could love, <laughs> for many, many weeks. And it does constitute visual pollution. Um, I'm, I'm inclined to the view that we could do much for the beauty of this city by removing those signs. As much as it's a part of democracy, I think the time has come to recognise that we are out of step with many other places and there is much to be gained for the city by not allowing on numerous occasions throughout the course of a four-year cycle, state, federal, double dissolutions, council elections and the like for these posters to appear. There are other means by which people can get the message across. Um, so uh, I, I will support this, recognising that the administration can do very little other than ask the minister to consider it, but I think it is a step in the right direction. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to the member. Seems. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I won't uh, lower myself to uh, respond to um, personal attacks, but I will um, make the, um, the point that I make no apology for uh, representing my ratepayers and constituents who raise issues with me. Um, and, you know, anybody who has stood for office has had this feedback. Um, and indeed, it, it's feedback that's been raised by all sides of politics. Um, and that's why I've put it forward, because I think it's a good discussion for us to have. Um, our public streets belong to all of us um, and uh, they shouldn't be um, turned into a spectacle for elections and we shouldn't be having a electoral system that disadvantages people that don't have the resources to be able to um, compete. In terms of the question around um, recycling, if, uh, if this isn't supportive um, tonight, then I'll, I'll look at that um, going forward. Um, for the record, uh, in my own case, uh, some of my core flutes have been uh, given to an organisation and turned into water bowls at the Nato Zoo. So um, they've gone on to a new, um, a new home and the animals at the zoo are looking probably lovingly into my face on a daily, uh, daily basis. Um, I want to pick up uh, Councillor Hyde's um, point about what happens interstate. Um, you know, Councillor uh, Kira talked about this being uh, some sort of move towards a communist state. I'd hardly call uh, New South Wales um, some sort of communist 
um, state. I know that is Berejiklian may not be quite right-wing enough for Councillor Kira, but I don't think um, she would support the, uh, the characterisation of New South Wales as some sort of communist state. This isn't a uh, anti-democracy idea. If anything, it would enhance our um, democratic uh, process. Politics isn't a beauty contest, and um, we shouldn't be um, encouraging uh, that approach to, um, to our politics. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Members, if we can go to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Division. Oh. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, sorry, members. Sorry, I was lost. Council, as a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. That takes us to uh, item number 15.3, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll um, take the motion as read and I'll seek a second that, that's okay. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Look, I'll be brief. Um, I think it just goes back again, and I know we're going through a process at the moment where we're looking at our procurement policy, and I think we may need to take that through a workshop process and look more in depth on how we could uh, personalise the process. I do think that our um, city ratepayers and businesses should benefit directly from doing business with council, and I'm, I am talking about the small business in the city, um, especially when we're talking about businesses that don't know how to go through a tender process. Uh, we're talking here about potentially what happens under a $50,000 amount, and we're calling them a micro-tender. Imagine there's an opportunity uh, for us, for example, to provide lunch for 20 people where sandwiches are required or we need 100 pens or X amount of paper realms, et cetera, et cetera. There's an opportunity to put that on a website and have a city of Adelaide business tender on our site to be able to do business with the city and simplify that process uh, using technology for them to have um, a bite of that cherry. Most businesses that you speak to in the city of Adelaide don't know how to do that. Um, they don't consider themselves the bigger end of town where they understand tender processes. And we're not looking or suggesting here that um, tenders over $100,000 will be addressed here. But anything under 50000 anything under 10000 is really life-changing to a lot of businesses around. Uh, imagine any business in the city was to pick up an extra forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year in revenue. It's a small business in the city that represents over 10% of its annual uh, net return, which is a significant amount. Um, so for us, if we are serious about attracting businesses to the city, and about growing the city businesses, then we should try as part of our criteria to focus on incentivizing our city businesses first, provided they meet the quality of the tender around obviously quality, price, and they're competitive, then they should be given the first bite of the cherry. So that's literally what this is suggesting. Um, and I think there's a great opportunity in using technology for them to be providing that um, opportunity. That doesn't exclude outside city businesses of being part of the process. Uh, in South Australia, outside South Australia. It just means um, if it's the same product at the same price and it's a city business versus an outside city business, then I'd like to think that the city business will get to go first. Thank you, Dean. Um, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think this is a, a great idea and another example of um, uh, innovation that's been brought to the chamber by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I would say, I suppose, uh, this is what our ratepayers expect. They shop locally. Um, I shop locally. Most of us shop locally. So the City of Adelaide should shop locally too. Thank you. Thank you. Members, Councillor Kieran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I, look, I, I agree. I think this is a good motion. Uh, I think this is also a, a, a good point, I think, well, as always, to reflect on how tough it is that our city businesses uh, are doing it at the moment. They are doing it tough. They are doing it tough out there. Go for a walk around the CBD and uh, it's just manifest. So anything that will help and support that will give them a little leg up, um, all other things being equal, is, is good. It's a good idea. It's not going to be enough to help our city businesses, but that's uh, something for other uh, for other motions. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I really want to commend the Deputy Lord Mayor for putting this forward, um, and obviously support this uh, as well. Um, and I think it's a great story for this council. If this motion gets passed tonight, we have two resolutions: one supporting local businesses in our city, and one also supporting social enterprises that are of social benefit and uh, provide opportunities for people with uh, disabilities or experiencing social disadvantage. I think um, that's a, a good outcome. 
Thank you, members. Um, I also uh, think this is a, a, an excellent idea, and I think that we should leverage every opportunity through procurement to get the outcomes that we want to achieve for the city. And uh, many of us uh, went through the election knowing that we need to grow small businesses, and in growing small businesses, we're gonna grow jobs in the city, and we're gonna actually uh, make the city a better place. So I really do commend this one. And I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. That takes us to uh, 15.4. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to read my motion first. That Council investigate the opportunity for an international ambassador style program with the aim to engage members of elderly, international, and multicultural business communities, initially focused on China to advocate for the city of Adelaide as a destination to live, invest, study, and risk. Second, investigations to consider a program that will aim to be budget, budget neutral to the to council and could include training, promotional, and other opportunities for international investors. And I say second the vote. Thank you, Councillor Ho. The Deputy Lord Mayor has seconded your motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Members, I have been, we have been discussing our budget over the last two months, and I find that on one hand, all of us want to provide better services to our ratepayers. On the other hand, we also want to freeze our rates for either one year or full council term. So hence I started to think, other than keep pushing our CEO to increase and mean efficiency, what else can we do to maintain the balance sheet of our budget? About six weeks ago, I met one of our associate directors and talk about our international relationship review. Then this idea came up. We need to have some people who would like to help us to promote Adelaide. Hence, we will be able to attract more business delegations to Adelaide. More international students choose Adelaide. More tourist groups come to Adelaide. Adelaide will increase its global recognition in its own way. These people need to have reputation, experience, knowledge, and strength to promote Adelaide in its right way. As you know, I came from a business background and I have many connections with the local Chinese communities. Therefore, I understand what kind of opportunity we have here. If we are able to run a successful ambassador program, we will not only bring our ratepayers more business, we could also find many different ways to increase direct incomes to this council. Then we could provide more service or better services to our ratepayers. I had some preliminary discussions with our administration, and I understand that the admin will be able to provide trainings to these ambassadors. Therefore, they understand what they can do, what they can't do. <clears throat> Other than that, they also need to pay the training fee, which means this program will cost the council nothing, will cost our ratepayer nothing. These ambassadors are here for honour, like all the elected members. They're not here for money. Well, members, to me, this is a pretty good deal. We invest almost nothing. If the program does not success, we lost nothing. And at least more people know about Adelaide. However, if the program success, then our return will be fantastic. Members, I would like to have your support, as I believe this program is good for our repairs and is good for our council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Lord Mayor. <coughs> Members, Councillor Sims and then Councillor Knoll. A question for Administration, Lord Mayor. As part of this process, would they be uh, developing criteria around uh, what constitutes um, an international ambassador and the kind of countries that we would uh, work with? I'm just keen to understand the investigation. CEO. You three, Lord Mayor, I'll ask uh, Ian to respond to that, thanks. Pardon me, through the Lord Mayor. Absolutely. Look, we're in the middle of a international review. We've taken that to committee, and this aligns with the type of thinking of it's probably a bit more in the in the detail. Um, but we'll be looking at programs like this that could support the markets that we would like to attract um, services for trade, inbound or outbound. So, I, I, look, I think it's something worthy of consideration. We're looking at it pretty closely. Okay. Uh, look, thank you. On that basis, I'm happy to support this. Um, I do think it's important that we get some criteria around um, developing these kind of relationships. Um, and in particular, in terms of giving some feedback to administration, I think it would be really useful to look at things like, you know, potential economic benefit to our city, 
uh, potential for us to pioneer you know, new technology, looking at things like climate change adaptation um, and sustainability as well. And then of course, the potential to attract new people into our city. I'm sure there are lots of other factors too, but um, happy to support this, but good to get some criteria to guide the decision making. Thank you, Councillor Council Canal. Um, just taking that a little bit further and, and certainly expanding on the idea, I mean, out of the luncheon, that, uh, the business luncheon from yesterday, there was a conversation around uh, how we provide Adelaide, and this is, is came through the uh, RMMA, and uh, we have 250,000 or so people that are expats from, from or should I say, uh, people from Adelaide and South Australia who are overseas. Uh, we have, uh, was it, I think it was 93,000 people who have Adelaide uh, in their in their LinkedIn profiles, etc. I think Facebook as well. So if we look at this as a as a more concentrated uh, um, effort in regards to ambassadors, etc. But if we take it a little bit step further and work together with the other education institutions and with uh, uh, you know in general with uh, uh, and we connect with uh, all those people who have lived here, who have experienced here, or or identify with Adelaide, then we have the ability to have all these uh, these people one as a conduit for information because again part of the conversation people who left there 10 15 years ago was that uh, the Adelaide then is not the Adelaide now and we can bring them up to date and bring them uh, into a city that uh, is going forward in great ways is very vibrant and is having a wonderful place to live and not only reinforce it for them there's people who potentially come back home but also for them to be able to advocate on our behalf and it's that word of mouth uh, that extends uh, our influence uh, and also the, the value of people to visit us and i think if we do this in in first of all in a nice concentrated way and, and put together a good program which is lovely but we can expand with all of our partners uh, in all the different institutions and uh, other other government uh, uh, organizations etc then we have an ability to uh, extend our influence and our information systems to other people and then thereby encouraging them to come back to Adelaide or visit or take part in things so that you know we do then get that greater exposure and get that benefit which is then very economic and even if it's just uh, with innovation and, and seeing us as a hub and uh, that those also those sort of things will link us to uh, the greater community and, and make us more a desirable destination. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. A question for administration. Um, are we jumping the gun here? It's a, it's, a, it's a great idea, very much support the spirit of the motion, but are we jumping the gun by in specifying China uh, at all with this? Um, is, or, or, or does China represent a good and, and, and obvious first choice? Uh, and is that motion at the moment not put in the heart of a sort of cart before the horse? Through the CEO. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Um, to the Lord Mayor. Oh, look, I just, it, we'd be looking at, uh, again, in the context of our international strategy, we've talked about sister city relationships, we've talked about our major trading partner relationships, we've talked about um, essentially fishing where the fish are in terms of our international activity. So I think we'd look at that as a, as a lens. Um, clearly, China is a major trading partner for Australia on multiple fronts. It's a major source of international students into Adelaide and South Australia. I think that would be a logical place to look, but I wouldn't be precluding um, other opportunities as well in the context of our international strategy. Uh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Look, that sounds good. We've, we've got that sentence saying initially focusing on China. So administration's happy to, to see that this does not preclude a more general lens uh, across opportunities. I don't think that's actually how the motion reads, Councillor, in well, terms of yes, that yes, being well, initial. We're, we're, I've just asked for administration's interpretation of that. You three, well, we can confirm that is the case. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Ho to sum up. Councillor Ho, I need you to sum up. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Indeed, like this motion is all about use other people's time, other people's experience, other people's knowledge, other people's money to promote Adelaide. All right. And uh, the reason why I have been like focused on China first, because really like that's something I am familiar with. And hence, if we have a successful, successful program, we can use it as a model. Hence, we could like leave it to other communities or other language groups and then follow the same program. Right, thank you. Thank you, members. We go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to item 15.5. Councillor Moran? Um, yes, I move 
move the uh, motion to put you in my right name. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. You had your hand up to second, is that? Yep. Um, look, uh, we've all done a, I've done a lot of talking on this today, and I've probably bent most of your ears over the last few years. Certainly, the, the Lord Mayor and I have had detailed discussions as to this. Um, one of our main um, marketing and advertising um, thrusts uh, to get people into the city, which is also one of our main aims to be people to come and work and live in the city, is, I can't remember the exact words, but uh, come and live in the city and walk to work. And that was very successful. That really pointed out how easy it is to live in the city, uh, walking to work, we're a small, compact, vibrant city. Uh, but it didn't factor in the fact that uh, many of the people living and working in the city will eventually want to have children and have indeed have children. Uh, because of the nature of the city buildings, it's been very hard to incorporate large scale um, childcare centres the hospital has, uh, the university has, because they, are, they have open space. Um, so really, uh, I don't want us to try and solve necessarily this today, and I don't think the motion does point out a solution. But what we want is to have accessible childcare for every parent who lives and works in the city. Because it's no use living and working in the city if you have to drive out to uh, the suburbs to drop your children off. Um, there were some suggestions put up today by uh, some people who were negative about this, saying that, oh, what about people picking their children in cars, where will they park? That's the whole point. They won't have to pick their children up in cars. They will, they will get to uh, the childcare the way they get to work, the way they get home. Um, would I think, and uh, I know most people here agree, that what a, what a great thing to be a world leader in this um, aim, a very human aim. I really laud the um, desires of councillors to become world leaders in the green revolution and things like this. But really to go right back to the family and children and parents, um, this, this is that sort of issue. Um, and I don't want to speak much more about it. I think I'm preaching converted. Um, thank goodness. Uh, so I, I recommend this motion to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, as a mother, um, my children are older now. Um, they're in like early 20s, late teens. But uh, to, to have had the opportunity to have a childcare centre five minutes away from my work would be uh, immense uh, pl pleasure to me because it would be less stressful and uh, it would uh, obviously I'd be able to be. Uh, Go to my children if they need me in the moment's notice because it's only five minutes away. Um, if they need assistance with anything, so the fact that that they're around the close to my work will assist me immensely. So I support this motion. Um, the, the the intention of this is for the council is not to um, for this motion is that we don't operate them. Um, as I understand it, it, it is simply to advocate for developers to be able to add childcare to their builders, uh, and, and it's a very sensible approach um, to do this. So um, I encourage developers to, this would encourage developers to add childcare services into the buildings to assist mothers um, to be able to, for them to bring their children um, with them close by to work, they're not moments away. Um, it, it is a very a sensible way to, uh, for families. And it's also an excellent way for to grow a population the city, target millennials who are ready to start families without uh, compromising on their city lifestyle. Um, so we're very much a council about exclusivity and to accommodate families to raise their children will um, increase the number of people living and working in the city with, with, a, with a limited amount of stress. And that's, that's really important for young families, especially not only for mothers, but also for fathers. And, and that this is a step forward to uh, in the direction to um, uh, for doing you know uh, for it to be appealing for young families. So I strongly um, encourage this motion and um, yeah, and, and support. Thank you, Councillor Curtis. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and look, I, I certainly uh, echo a lot of the comments that Councillor Kouros has made. Um, I really want to commend Councillor Moran for putting this forward. Um, I know this has been a, a long-term uh, priority um, and uh, it's great to, uh, to see um, this coming to fruition tonight and hopefully being passed tonight. Um, I think uh, 
this is the kind of project that really is transformational for our city in terms of bringing more people into the city of Adelaide um, and also diversifying our population in terms of having uh, more young families living here. Um, I know for a lot of young families, um, access to childcare is a huge issue um, and uh, it can be an equity issue in terms of impacting on people's employment um, and uh, impacts on the decisions that, that they make. And so having childcare, as Councillor Kouros has said, in a nearby uh, proximity, it, having childcare in your proximity, I think would have a really, really big impact. As the motion identifies, there are some opportunities coming down the line for us uh, here in the city of Adelaide, and um, it's a great way for us to look at those um, and really um, talk the talk when it comes to or walk the walk, um, when it comes to being a, a modern and um, progressive city that, that is open to everybody. Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I agree with the other members. I think this is a good motion. I, uh, I'd like to stress that uh, at this point, um, this, this matter has been talked about. It's been put forward by Councillor Moran. Uh, obviously, it's been talked about. I've heard reservations about the, uh, you know, about the, the sort of perhaps what might be the ultimate proposal. Um, for those who might have reservations at this stage, I would say, look, this is, um, this motion provides us with the diligence. Uh, it provides us with the information that we would need to be able to make a decision going about this in future. So I think this is actually eminently sensible, whether you have reservations about what shape or, or whether you have complete reservations about childcare being fostered by the city council in some way. Um, I've got questions, I've got reservations, but I think at this juncture, this motion provides us with the diligence that we need. I think it's a good idea. And I think we, 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 we shouldn't uh, hold back at this stage on this proposal. Thank you. Um, members, I also want to uh, just add a few words in there. I was, I was very happy to support and work with um, Councillor Moran to bring this motion into the chamber. Um, I think that if we want to be a truly livable city, and I'd like us to be pitching for number one, not number five, um, or number three, then it's all about lifestyle. And we need to make sure the experience of living, living in our city is number one, which means, and we do have a role to advocate that. And it doesn't matter, young or old, you know, uh, we know that parents, both who live outside the city and have to come into the city and live in the city and, and work, uh, need the childcare facilities. Um, we are hoping to, we know that there's a big recruitment drive going on with um, post-production and things like that. And they are the millennials that are coming in and they want to live close by. They want five minutes between work and getting home and they want the support services around them. Um, we also have, uh, we are the city in a park and we have the biggest backyard and squares, everything within about 500 metres. So we have open space galore. So um, maybe we can start our own baby boom right here in the city of Adelaide. Um, I'll hand back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I certainly applaud your sentiments there. We have young uh, daughters approaching that age and uh, I have uh, daughters with children. Uh, so I've seen firsthand the, um, as, as Mary, uh, Councillor Kouros pointed out, the, the difficulty of the working woman, um, of the working parent. Um, there's been an enormous transformational um, generational change in the last four generations of women and um, our daughters, um, the Lord Mayor, my daughter, that, that generation will be returning to work in numbers or percentages that have never been seen before. It is the norm, not the exception. And that four generation ago was not uh, working outside the home, was not, what, was not a usual thing. So we've got to play catch up with looking after the children of these um, parents. Um, I want our city to be a welcoming city to the to the young people, the young families and their children and make sure that they know that if they come and move into the city, we care about them and we're going to do everything we can to get them looked after, be close to their parents and transform our city into a family friendly city. That's how we'll become number one. All the other cities are doing other things and but nobody is pursuing this zealously as we could be. This will, could be the legacy for this council. Um, and what a wonderful that would be. On practical terms, I've spoken with a lot of young mothers and young fathers. 
um, young professional women in town particularly because my daughter's a lawyer and my daughter-in-law is as well and they point out that they would go that many women would go to a, a firm who offered this sort of thing it would be an attractor to that business if they could say come and work with us the payback was would be that these women parents return to work much quicker generally it's one 12 months off so that the baby can be breastfed for a reasonable amount of time. Rob knows what I'm talking about, being the father of a new baby. Um, these, girl, these women and parents would go back to work quicker if they could just caught a lift up to the childcare centre with a beautiful roof garden. Uh, it's, it's a dream, but it's a very achievable dream. And um, to, uh, to answer what Councillor Carer is saying, look at what we want to get to in the end and commit to that. We want to have childcare in every building where it's necessary. We can start with our own. That is the aim. How we get there is, is going to be up for grabs and they'll be, oh, we don't want to mandate this, we don't want to do that. But if we keep our eye on the prize and advertise our city as the child friendliest, the parent friendliest, the family friendliest city in the world, we will get recognised for that. And it's a good thing to be recognised for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. That takes us members to item, sorry, glasses, 15.6, Councillor Kouros. Do you, do you want me to read that out? Or I, uh, I that's up to you, Councillor Kouros. I'm happy to take this. Take this read. Councillor Moran, are you happy to second that? Yes, I am. Yep. This motion is about the recognition that there is a gap between homelessness, mental health and drug dependency. Um, I've become aware of this um, through an individual who um, unwillingly leave, would, won't leave the streets of North Adelaide, um, particularly no Connell Street, whereby he refuses to leave because it, he believes that it's his home. Um, he's given, given a lot of support, um, but he refuses to take it because he <coughs> It just continually stays on the streets. That's where he believes his home is. So it, it come to, I've come to recognise that there is a gap. Um, the John Dunson Foundation and, uh, and our administration have been working collaboratively and, and uh, I recognise that the excellent work that they have been doing together and, and particularly the John Dunson Foundation who work extensively to end street homelessness. However, it's really the gap that I'm talking out about between homelessness and mental health and um, drug dependency issues. And that really needs to be um, supported by the state and federal government. Um, so additional resources and assistance is required um, by the government um, for people in the streets who fall in this gap. Um, and this, mo this motion is to highlight the importance of this fact um, and further funding required to support, um, to support them and to support people um, that are living in the streets that uh, is beyond um, homelessness that they need that support. That's what this motion is. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Moran? I will do my last And Councillor Donovan? Um, I would always support more funding for social services, so I absolutely commend Councillor Kouros for um, seeking further funding. Just to note, however, that when we're talking about homelessness, rough sleepers are, I believe, somewhere in the area of 14% of um, those who are experiencing housing instability and homelessness, so it is a small proportion, so ensuring that when we talk about um, any relationship between mental health and um, drug dependency issues that uh, there are many complex reasons why people experience housing instability and homelessness um, and they are structural, they are systemic, they are individual so certainly there is a niche where um, we can always be doing more and, and seeking more support services but just putting it within the context that we wouldn't want to be suggesting that, um, that the reasons for homelessness are only relating to drug use and poor mental health, um, that it, it is a very complex area and that this is a subset within a subset and the reasons for people experiencing housing instability is much more complex. Um, so just to put it within that context. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I, I um, have a similar view to um, Councillor Donovan in, in terms of recognising, obviously, the complexity around homelessness um, and that it's uh, 
there's not necessarily just a nexus between mental health and, and homelessness. People can fall into homelessness for a range of, of different reasons. Um, but that said, I will of course support the motion um, and I, I thank um, Councillor Kouros for, for putting it forward. Um, our administration does a lot of work in this regard and has been supporting uh, organisations that work in the sector. Um, but we do need the state government to really step up in this area in terms of uh, providing support for vulnerable people in our community. Um, but we also need the federal government to step up as well in terms of building more homes and dealing with the issue of homelessness. Um, I note, Lord Mayor, that we have a forum happening on Thursday um, for candidates uh, running for office, running for the federal seat of Adelaide. It'd be great if this was a topic for discussion among the candidates, really asking them what they will do to address the issue of homelessness. When the federal government have gifted uh, 15 million dollars, attention to the crows, you know, imagine what they could do if they put this money into dealing with homelessness in the city of Adelaide. Um, there are some big opportunities for all levels of government to show leadership on this. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I commend this and I, I do um, rather more agree with uh, Councillor Kura's assessment. I think mental illness has a much stronger link to homelessness than just a small portion. Um, when I grew up, uh, and some of us in the room were saying similar age, there, was, there were two world-class mental institutions in Adelaide, Hillcrest and Glenside. Slowly over the years, they've been unpacked and minimised. When I grew up, we saw homelessness when we were lucky enough to go to Europe if we were lucky enough to go to Europe. We didn't have um, homelessness as in the rough sleeping type homelessness, I'm not necessarily talking about the disenfranchised in other ways. But that the problem, when, when people say it's so, so multifactorial, da, 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 of course it is. Mental health issues are always going to be present. They will always lead to drug issues in many cases, but they don't need to lead to homelessness. We've lived in a straight state up until recent history, whereas our children and young adults think that this is part of the normal modern society. It's not. It's not hard to, um, to solve. You treat the mental illness in your state and you look after those people. The man that um, we took, Mary and I have been uh, trying to uh, help was not indeed homeless. He had a home but he was very mentally ill. And the gap that I think Councillor Curris is pointing out is that, that for those extreme cases that, that do not want to move off the street, do not seek treatment, do not want treatment, there is a huge gap there. That man should have been looked after. He should not have been left on the street for three months there, three months in King William Street and three months in Archer Street. He was a danger to himself. Um, he was often psychotic. Uh, we took him to the Royal Adelaide Hospital. He was discharged immediately from the mental health ward. There is nobody to help out there with mental illness. You speak to any parent of a um, schizophrenic child, there's no one to call. Our mental health system has been dismantled and that has led to people that are mentally ill being unlooked after and ending up on our streets and often the prey of drug dealers uh, self-medicating to make themselves feel better. So uh, it is a big problem. It's not hard to solve. It's just getting the staff, getting the money and getting back to where we were. When my husband was a young intern, we lived at Glenside for a little while and um, it was, a, it was a wonderful institution. It cared for everybody. If somebody was uh, psychotic on the street, sleeping rough, they were picked up, taken there, given a bed, treated. Uh, regularly politicians from the Eastern Seaboard um, toured to base their um, health systems um, on, the, on our model. But of course, they're massively expensive and you can see what's happened to Glenside. It's all been sold off for housing and film, film so there's nothing. So therefore, our mental institutions our mental patients are sleeping on the streets and they're becoming drug addicted and they're becoming rough sleepers. It's very sad. Thank you, members. Councillor Abrahams, 
Lord Mayor, just very briefly, I agree with everything that's been said uh, in this chamber tonight around homelessness. I uh, note that um, the state government agency responsible for homelessness, the South Australian Housing Authority, I believe is working on a um, uh, a housing and homelessness uh, uh, strategy and, and framework uh, that's due to be released later on this year. And I, I commend Councillor Coros for bringing this into the chamber um, because a complex issue like homelessness uh, uh, is not left up to one layer of government or one government department to solve, but uh, it takes local government, it takes state government, and it takes federal government uh, to all come together and work together in order to try and resolve this. So, uh, uh, again, I acknowledge what Councillor Gross has done today and the leadership on uh, resolving homelessness. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gross. Just... I understand uh, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Sim's concerns, but um, and I appreciate their comments and and, and uh, what their, their views are. However, I just want to be clear, Lord Mayor, that this is a gap that's it's continually and it's going to keep on um, increasing um, if we don't address the issue um, as soon as possible. And that's why calling on to the there's only so much that we can do as a council. Foundation can do, and they work very hard, and and they commend their work. However, you know, as Councillor Moran has pointed out, you know, there has appears to be uh, some uh, cutbacks by the state government in in the mental health um, and drug dependency um, realm, and uh, we really, really need to um, seek uh, support, further support from state government and federal government in regards to this. Thank you, members. If we can now vote, those in favour. Those against? That's carried. It takes us to 15.7. Uh, yeah, 15.7. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I take the motion as uh, read. And I seek a second. <coughs> Sorry, thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, Lord Mayor, before I speak to the motion, am I able to ask administration a question? Yes. Um, so administration uh, comment number two uh, there is a mention of a uh, bus lane uh, timings so uh, i just want to uh, get some clarification on uh, on on that phrase and that uh, that lane is not dedicated to buses it is for um, all forms of uh, transport thank you ceo hmm. thanks Clinton. can you respond to that Um, that is correct. Um, they are part-time bus lanes, so they're dedicated through the peak periods for bus. So if, even if they are, when they are, uh, I guess you know, they are part-time bus lanes. But um, are we are we able to have uh, to cars travel in that lane when they are dedicated to, to buses as well? So is that for all traffic to go through? It's just um, it's just a matter of uh, um, reducing the, uh, the the time that uh, that cars can park there on the street. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, yeah, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. Lord Mayor, I, um, I'll keep this uh, uh, fairly short. It's a um, um, uh, straightforward uh, motion. It's uh, consistent with what the state government is trying to do. And a little while ago, they came out with a, um, uh, I guess, a, a bit of a headline. Uh, and it read keeping metro traffic moving. So what I would like to do is uh, bring that into the city and uh, I'd like to keep the Adelaide traffic uh, moving. Um, and uh, in order to do that, uh, um, I guess in doing that, what we're doing is uh, reducing congestion uh, and easing the, uh, the traffic flow. So uh, the city bound lane uh, will, be, um, uh, will be more clear for traffic to, to come through in the morning and the outbound lane will be more clear to traffic uh, in the evenings. Uh, so overall, it is easier for uh, uh, for travelling in and out of the city, whether if it's for residents or visitors. Uh, and I look forward to uh, um, the chamber's support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. I was very pleased to see this motion, and I wholeheartedly uh, support it. I think anything that removes cars from parking in the bike lanes should be completely encouraged. And if you choose to put anything similar forward, I will likewise support it. Pogney Street is a um, significant um, passageway both for cars and for pedestrians and for people who are riding bikes. So this will free up the passage for all of those travellers in and out of the city. So I will happily support this motion. Thank you. Councillor Kieran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, 
Yeah, look, I, I commend Councillor Abraham today for, uh, for this motion. I think anything that uh, helps improve, uh, improve the flow of traffic in and out of the city, uh, helps improve uh, the economic outcomes in the city, helps improve jobs, employment, the whole bit. Um, but I, I would like to clarify uh, with administration, um, because there appears to be a, it's not a contradiction, a, a something that I, I don't quite get. So when administration says that this, these lanes will be part-time dedicated bus lanes, uh, what does that mean? Because at present, uh, we're being told that these are bus lanes that all cars can use at all times, which is effectively a clearway, or is it the case that cars are excluded from these lanes for any portion of the uh, for the day. See you. Clinton. <laughs> Vanessa, I think. Um, through the Lord Mayor, um, we don't operate clearways in the city because clearways only operate on state government roads. So the way we can facilitate that, something similar to that is through parking controls. Um, so what what the bus lanes do is um, limit is stop cars from parking there, but we can't necessarily prevent cars from driving in that lane, and that's not their intention. It's to stop cars from parking there, which then facilitates traffic using that lane. Okay, thanks. So it's notionally it it will be notionally a bus lane. But in fact, and in practice, it will be a car and bus lane. Yeah, there'll be no impediment to cars using the lanes during that period, is that right? Through the Lord Mayor, that's my understanding, that's right. I can just, if, if I can just chime in there, because I actually drive down that section of the road and cars use it, buses use it, cyclists use it, um, and it's just in that particular area because you can park there from nine. Often the cars will park there at, you know, half past eight or quarter to nine or something, and then it chokes all the way back because you have to try and get around. But cars use it, bikes use it, buses use it. Yeah, no, I just want to be very clear that there, there, is, there is no infraction. There, there is, you, you, you will not get a fine. Uh, I mean, hey, cars use bus lanes all the time, uh, but in this instance, the council designated bus lane will not mean a car will is liable for a uh, for a um, uh, expiation fee. If it's um, through the Lord Mayor, that's right. We don't have jurisdiction to police the drivers, just the parkers. Okay. Thank you, members. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yeah, just very briefly, Lord Mayor. Look, I support this. Um, anything that helps people move through the city is a, uh, a good initiative. However, I do wish to clarify, my understanding is that we are removing parking uh, out the front of businesses in Pulteney Street for two hours a day. Is that correct interpretation? Um, through the Lord Mayor, I'd have to look at exactly where those individual, but where the bus lanes are um, to answer that correctly. So I'd probably need to take that question on notice. I anticipate some of the bus, part-time bus lanes would be in front of businesses, but I wouldn't want to definitively answer that. No, that's okay. And therefore, we will be consulting with businesses about these changes that may impact on them. And if their feedback is negative, will we change it or will we just proceed with it anyway? Um, through the chair, as per the administration comment, the intent would be that we would be notifying as opposed to consulting. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Members? <coughs> Question? Councillor Captain. Question, administration. Just and on the parking, on the loss of parking, uh, because there will be a loss of parking during this time, from four o'clock, for example. Uh, from say 4 to 4.30, uh, in your view, is it A, uh, you know, going to be fine, going to be, a, the upshot is it's going to be more efficient uh, and better for businesses and the economy overall, or do you think uh, there's a question mark there, and if so, um, might we want to workshop this a little further, or at least get, uh, get some sort of, do you need time to investigate that element, or are you, are you thoroughly satisfied? that uh, the time restriction on parking will not be 
too much of an impediment on businesses. CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, look, I think this matter, um, if it becomes complex and there are any issues, we would report back to you. Um, as it stands at the moment, I think it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, and yeah, also my commitment to you would be, if it becomes problematic um, in, before it's rolled out, we will notify you and come back. But at this time, it looks like it's fairly straight. Thanks, CEO. What, what do you mean by problematic? <laughs> Look, I think if um, if we go through the process and we identify internally that there are um, significant problems that we see with the removal of parking, the notification process, it becomes an issue. We will certainly be bringing it back. If it's it's a if it's accepted as a fairly reasonable proposition, we would just go forward with it as as directed by council. That's the best commitment we can give you. Members. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham to do summer. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I thought that this would be uh, uh, fairly straightforward, and I was uh, uh, I was hoping that as as we continued the debate, I could see uh, uh, Councillor Donovan uh, on board. I could see Councillor Kerr on board. I could see. Uh, I haven't heard from Councillor Sims yet. I'm on board. Excellent. <laughs> Good to have that. Um, this doesn't happen very very often. Um, but uh, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, if we're losing uh, our car parks on one side of the on one side of the street, we we do have car parks on the other side. So I just want to highlight that fact that uh, one uh, uh, one side of the road is uh, for uh, uh, morning peak, uh, peak hour traffic, and the other side of the road is for the afternoon peak hour traffic. Thank you. Thank you, members. If we invoke, please those in favour, those against. That is carried. Our final motion on notice, Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I um, seek a second. Councillor Sims, please. Thank you. Um, look, this proposal is fairly straightforward as uh, the administration uh, observes in its comments. Uh, the formulation of guiding or first principles are vital to this uh, project before it progresses further. This is not an exhaustive list. It actually says including but not limited to, and so any matter can be added at the workshop. Um, I selected these because they are important issues to residents of North Adelaide, um, and we do need to settle these matters fairly quickly because the project is progressing, as everybody knows, already the federal government has committed $15 million to the uh, uh, demolition of the aquatic centre and the new Crows headquarters. Uh, and uh, there is already some uh, concern from leaseholders. I understood uh, from a conversation today that uh, Blackfriars School is somewhat uncertain about its tenure on the site. Uh, and has in fact begun talking to the Adelaide Crows about some accommodation in order for them to remain on the site. Um, and yet uh, we've said nothing about this in uh, any conversation here in Council about what our view is about how those uh, ovals might be used, when they might be used and by whom they might be used. We've said nothing about what sort of structure we uh, would agree to on that site, how wide, how high. Uh, we haven't made any comment uh, that would be useful to the Crows in terms of parking. We haven't said how many cars uh, we'd like to see them park there, whether the parking is underground, whether it's on the parklands, and what the impacts might be on neighbouring residential streets, whether in fact it's acceptable for there to be some uh, uh, impost on the residents of North Adelaide. Um, and uh, we haven't told them what our expectations are in terms of what the Crows put there and whether or not we might entertain something that competes with North Adelaide businesses. For example, we haven't asked uh, ourselves, would we be happy about there being a cafe there or cafes or restaurants or bars? or, for example, a sports medicine clinic, as the Crows have at Westlakes already, uh, and which would, of course, compete with the professional services that are on offer in North Adelaide and the city. Nor have we asked whether any retail activity, such as a, a merchandising uh, arm of the Crows, might be acceptable as well. So uh, that 
is a fairly long list, and I, I guess the other thing uh, that we need to clarify in our own minds is whether there's going to be a contribution from the city to whatever the structure is there, uh, or indeed what the charges might be, whether in fact, uh, if there is some agreement for this to proceed, if we get beyond the next phase, I think the Crows should know whether we would charge the same lease and license fees that we do to say the Lutheran Sports Club. So that's just a, a broad summation and I'm happy for other members to contribute uh, questions as well. Councillor Sims. I've reserved my mind. Okay. Um, CEO. It's really more, more just a, a point of fact. The $15 million, I understand it, has not referenced the demolition of the Aquatic Centre, as Councillor Martin has said. I understand they do have a $15 million grant from the federal government, but it didn't specifically say demolition of the Aquatic Centre. Just, um, just a, a question of clarity, but isn't that what the Crows have reportedly said they would have to do, demolish the Aquatic Centre in order to build a centre? The, the $15 million is not attached to a site. $15 million is a grant from the federal government to build, to facilitate a new um, premises. It, it wasn't attached to anything. And, and we haven't had a proposal yet, as you know. Oh, I'm sorry, a little bit. So uh, I'm incorrectly linking the demolition of the Aquatic Centre, which the Crows have said they would need to do if that was the site and the $15 million, you're saying it's not conditional. The $15 million is not attached to a site. The $15 million has been granted to the Crows for a new premises, but it isn't specific as to where that is. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Do you wish to make some other comments? Yeah. Yeah, three Lord Mayor. I think I do not want to enter the debate. All I want to do is provide you some process facts, because I know there's a lot of council member interest in this matter. So I think it's it's probably a good opportunity for me to just clarify where we're up to with the unsolicited proposal. Um, just first of all, I just need to say that Director of Community Care, Claire Mockler and myself will be, I guess, overseeing the project from here on in, just thought I'd let you know that as a council. Um, in accordance with, um, with the unsolicited proposal framework, the matter has been taken now to stage two of the three-stage process, which is outlined you know, on our website. Um, and so we're in the final, final stages of, I guess, completing and finalising the participation framework for the Adelaide Football Club, which would, I guess, confirm the process from here by way of seeking a detailed proposal from the AFC, outlining the obligations of the AFC and of Council, and detailing community engagement requirements. Um, so that's something that will be included in the participation framework. Um, what I do intend to do is to refer this matter um, to a special committee of council on Tuesday, the 4th of June, so that you can have full and frank and detailed conversation, followed by a report to the council meeting on the 11th of June um, for formal debate. So that's what's intended. So that. I want to make that really clear that that process is coming forward fairly soon. Um, all the matters raised in the motion on notice and any other matter that any other councillor wants to raise can be discussed quite openly at that committee meeting. And, um, you know, um, that, that the intent would be, I guess, uh, to focus primarily on high level guiding principles because at this time we don't have the details of any master plan from the Adelaide Football Club. Um, so I also wanted to say to you that the participation framework is going to be very deliberate in providing an opportunity for council to respond to and further refine the guiding principles as we go through this process of analysis. So it's not a one opportunity, it's not a once off opportunity, it's going to be a multiple opportunity uh, process where we can you know, improve on, clarify, uh, refine what our requirements are as we go through. Just make that really clear, it's a staged process. Um, so, um, so just to recap, the matters that have been listed and any other matter that any councillor has, we intend to provide opportunity for you on the 4th to fully discuss. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham today. Lord Mayor, given the um, administration comments, I'd like to uh, uh, have this motion be brought. 
So I need a seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. So vote, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That motion is carried. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay. So, apologies, members. So, now that the motion is to be put, we need to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Does everybody understand what just happened there? Sorry. Okay. So, we just voted on the motion to be put, and now we oh. go back and vote on the motion. So, we're voting on the motion in front of you, item 15.8. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Can yeah, um, sorry, Councillor Moran, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. Members, that takes us to item 16, motions without notice. That takes us to item 17, which is exclusion of the public. <laughs> so if I could have a uh, mover and a seconder for 18 item 1.1, thank you Councillor Moran, a seconder, thank you Councillors, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Moran, oh, any uh, comments members, can we vote, thank you, those in favour, those against, thank you, that is carried.